First on CBS Mornings, we are talking to South Africa's first black female free diving instructor. And In free diving, you hold your breath rather than use breathing equipment. Zandale Inlovu was 28 years old when she snorkeled in the ocean for the very first time and fell in love with the sea. Now nicknamed the Black Mermaid, she is on a mission to make the ocean more inclusive. And she's out with a new children's book right there called Zandi Song, about a young girl who transforms into a mermaid. Through her journey, she learns about the beauty of the ocean and finds a sense of belonging. So Zandi's here with us today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to be here. Yes, I'm so absolutely. Happy to have you. So tell us about the inspiration. Obviously, you love the water now, but it wasn't always like that. Of course. So I grew up in Soweto in a landlocked area in South Africa and I only got to, I found the ocean in 2016, my first ever snorkel experience. I'm 28 years old. I don't even know how to use a snorkel kit. Jump into the water and I have this panic, but then I look beneath the surface and I could not believe the beauty. Mm. I could not believe the colors. The coral looked like it was lit up from beneath. It was the most incredible moment. And in my head was, what the hell is going on? <laughs> and, uh, and I guess from then to this moment has just been the realization that I wanted everybody to see how beautiful it was and find reason to protect her. But even in your nervousness of going in, what was it or was there a friend who pushed you to say, you've got to see what's below? Interestingly enough, it was nobody. I was riding down to breakfast and this guy's like, snorkel trip, snorkel trip. I'm like, I've always wanted to do that. Okay. And, um, and I did it, but I was also obviously freaking out because my family, we've got big beliefs around being around water. You're told you're raised kind of told to stay away from all bodies mm. of water. And so on that boat trip out was the biggest freak out you could ever imagine. I thought, <laughs> if anything happens to me, how do I explain to my family what I was doing here to even begin? Mm -hmm. And uh, it was crazy, but it's been such a beautiful journey. And culturally, we see that here in the United States too, with African-Americans not being able to swim. Um, what do you say to people who are growing up sometimes not with the education, but also the access. Mm. I often say we need to expand our narrative. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a narrative that talks to, you know, black people can't swim and and and, but we hold that as well as a cultural identity, which is not necessarily true. The water belongs to everybody. Mm. And I think we have a journey in expanding our own dreams, expanding our own worlds. And I think representation is so beautiful as a journey into the ocean because there's a healing and a connectedness. And when you see yourself enough, you begin to think, huh, you know, like, maybe I could do that. Right. So she says sharks are okay, maybe I could do that. Mm. And I think that's the, the fun in the space of playing around with representation and introducing the ocean over and over again until people are like, maybe it's not as scary. <laughs> right. I, I love in the book um, when young Zandi goes into the ocean and you write this, she felt something she had never felt before, the feeling of belonging. Um, how did you personally find that sense of belonging? And what do you want children who read this book to feel like when they read it? Such a beautiful question. Thank you. For me, looking beneath the surface, there was not one kind of beauty. Mm -hmm. So like this honeycomb moray comes in and it looks scary, but is it? And that's the thing with the ocean. There isn't one kind of beauty. Everything is beautiful in its own kind of way. And so I hope that kids realize just how diverse the ocean is, how there's not only one normative, but also the beauty of our ocean and the responsibility that we have to protect our oceans. And I always say kids are the most incredible advocates because they go back to their parents and they say, mom, no, no to single use plastic. Mom, no, could we do this differently? They advocate in the most powerful way and they bring change in the most powerful way. So we always hope to educate and just strengthen the voice of the little ones because this is their future we're talking about. Yeah. That's a great part of the book. I, I really appreciate that. I'm far from a world traveler, but on my honeymoon, I went to Italy, and it was also beautiful on the coast, and then I went swimming, and I had the kind of goggles on, and I saw there was plastic underneath the water, and it was the opposite of the experience you had where you saw all that beauty. Yeah. But this next generation, as the book shows, can make a difference. Absolutely. Um, talk to me about the braids. Uh, they're <laughs> iconic. Uh, they're gorgeous. Uh, and now they're illustrated in a book as well. What was it like <laughs> seeing that? It was crazy. So the first time I saw the illustrations, I met the lady who's braiding my hair and I just start crying. And she's like, are you okay? I'm like, and then I hold up like the first uh, illustrations of Sandy's song. But for me, braids are so culturally significant and it's just so beautiful to 
have all the discussions about how our hair is beautiful in the many different forms that it, um, our hair finds itself. You know, in the book, she goes from having an afro and the ocean gifts her these beautiful braids for her mission. And I just, it's expanding the narrative in every single moment that says, you know, we're beautiful in all the ways that we're going to find ourselves, but the ocean is also just one of the most beautiful ways that we will ever see ourselves. How, how do you deal, how did you deal with some of the hurtful comments that you, because it, the braids are beautiful, but some people had some <laughs> words for you. How did you know this? Um, research, <laughs> a fair point. <laughs> There's something about realizing that you could either assimilate yeah. or you can decide to push the walls because the little push ones- Push the walls. Deserve every single moment of having every kind of expression and it's not questioned. And so for me, it was a moment of realizing that if I become small, and assimilate, I don't, I don't bring anything to the future. And so what can I do as my gift to the little ones that come up behind us? Well, I think and this so is a beautiful gift. Well done. Having in this book, we are all one and the universe speaks to us. I think that is so true. Sandy Song. And, okay. and Luvu. Yes. Got it right. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, Zandy Song is on sale tomorrow. Make sure you check it out.